I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker, and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Quiet on set! It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hi, everybody. This is Tim Heidecker, the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. Welcome to the season premiere, season seven, uh, as we're calling it, Lucky Season Seven. Uh, lucky, the season, lucky Season 7, and uh, thank you for joining us again where we talk about movies and uh, all sorts of other media, as you'll see soon. My guest today, welcome back to the show, is Greg uh, Turkington here. Who, hey, Greg, guys. Thank you very much for coming back and being a part of the On Cinema uh, legacy. And I didn't think I'd be back this season, so it's kind of a trip to be here. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a wild ride. Getting I had you. to put aside... Our cinema, for fans uh, of our cinema that were wondering when that show was going to debut, we had a deal in place with ABC. There were some sticking points, I have to say, that weren't favorable. So I decided, let's worry about that another year and mm -hmm. let's get back to on cinema so that we can keep those reviews coming. And a lot of people were wondering, uh, I know you were upset, a lot of people were upset uh, about the way I handled your collection. And um, we've spoken about it. I feel like it's water under the bridge for us. Uh, but some of the viewing audience might not understand. Um, I believed in my heart that what I was setting aflame was dubs of those movies because I never in my million years believed that you were um, not truly dubbing tapes as you were in the scene. So but they were in video boxes. Well, we like covered, I wouldn't dub it and, mm -hmm. and put it in a new box. It doesn't I, make you've sense. You've explained that to me a number of times and I get it now. And I apologize to you. I will say this much, that at the time when Tim destroyed my collection, which is not a cool thing to do, no. that you wouldn't go into the Louvre with a flamethrower and destroy all those great paintings. And, and But you did do that with, I think at that time, one of the biggest collections in North America. Uh, I was upset. I'm over it now. The good news is, uh, and I can reveal this now to the public for the first time, uh, one of the fans of our shows uh, tipped me off uh, about a video shop in Victorville, California, mm -hmm. up in the desert, uh, that decided to discontinue the VHS format and rent only DVDs. For the past few years, these tapes have been in storage, in a storage locker in Victorville, gathering dust. Uh, the owner got tired of paying the fees for the storage locker and turned it over to me as a gift. Uh, and now I own this collection, which is an entire store stock, mm. all genres, all styles, all in beautiful condition. I've moved to Victorville, mm -hmm. taken up residence there, and right now I'm currently sorting and cataloging this collection, uh, and we're calling it the Victorville Film Archive. And if you've got some time, Tim, you should come out and see it. It's actually probably five times as big as my previous collection, and every single movie that you burned has mm -hmm. been replaced, in many cases, in triplicate. Almost one of those too-good-to-be-true happy endings which I'm proud to be a part of. Um, I quickly just want to give you guys an update of where I am uh, with my life. I know Greg doesn't want the show to be all about personalities, but people do want to know. Um, still, Ayaka's doing great. Little Tom Cruise is growing up. So he's going through sort of those terrible twos. A little early, can't put my finger on how many months he is, but he's just turning into such a wonderful boy. I've been enjoying really just expressing myself, my individual talents uh, through music uh, lately. And uh, thank you all for supporting Our Values Under Attack from Decker, uh, Hawaii. My first number one download. Uh, Where? As was well, my first download. It was the number first, it was the number one download for, out of that catalog. Um, as you know, I've got that um, bug, I, I got, whatever gene that is that make you gifted musically, I got it in, in spades. So I'm going to be probably the next few months working on that almost exclusively. Um, people go, well, what are you going to do next with Decker? What's happening? Season three, I can't wait to see season three. I mean, people are saying this to me almost on a constant basis. Every time I leave that, the apartment, people are stopping me on the street. I get pulled over. People are wondering, what is the future of Decker 3? Well, the new season of Decker is coming. With a big, big uh, caveat there and a big announcement to make is you, sir, Greg Turkington, will be in charge of the franchise. I've given keys to the kingdom over to you, 
And uh, Greg, I'm excited about it. Turkington here will be directing and uh, writing and producing the entire affair because I've talked to you about this. You know, I looked at the one of my idols, Steven Spielberg, and his ability to create a universe and something like Jurassic Park or, or Jaws, where he's directed the first, sometimes the second movies, and gone on and let the other people, smaller people. Uh, sort of worker bees go off and direct and write and all these things that aren't as important. And, and I thought, well, that's a smart way to do things. Why am I doing all of these things when I should be uh, spending more time with my family? Jaws 2 is great. Jaws 2 is not as, you know, they diminish as, as they go through, although I do like mm -hmm. I feel the opposite way. But I'm excited to hear, see your take on it. And uh, It's not going to be that different. Uh -huh. you know, when you have a good franchise, you want to stick to what works. I mean, like with the Bond movies, you know, different yeah. people direct them. They even have different people playing James well, that's Bond. That's not going to happen. There's so, a consistency to it. Same to Decker them. as Same always. Decker, yeah. but I'm just saying that, you know, we're going to stick with the exotic locales. We're going to stick with President Davidson. He's not going anywhere, folks. And uh, the concepts that make Decker such a successful series. I, I'm so excited to see the script and see what you've cooked up because uh, I know. It's halfway done now. Mm -hmm. Ten episodes written, ten to go. All right. Well, that's all the. Uh, housekeeping I need to do, unless you have anything to add. It's great to be back and great we're doing movies again. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we didn't have a chance to see the movies coming out this week. What we'd like to do is take a look back at the summer because so many great movies came out this summer. We show up the movies uh, on the screen here that we both agreed deserved five bags of popcorn. I'll show you. Uh, we do want to focus on two movies from the summer that have special meaning to us. Uh, Ant-Man, um, directed by Peyton Reed and stars uh, Paul Rudd, uh, Greg Turkington, Michael Douglas, Michael Penna. Uh, Ant-Man armed with a super suit with the astonishing ability to shrink and scale, but whatever, he turns into an ant, doesn't matter. Burger, burglar Scott Long must embrace his hero and, and it, yeah it's like there's not even a way to summarize that movie because it didn't as a movie it didn't make sense but um it was it was number one for several weeks so. your review you know i have to recuse myself uh you can't wear two hats at once i'm a critic obviously a film expert also an actor now and i think it would be unfair to the show for me to review my own movie so i'm going to recuse myself uh respectfully Fair enough. Um, I thought this movie was a miss. This was sort of, um, I'm wondering why did, who at the studio uh, decided to even put this one out in terms of why not just can it and just keep it in the, uh, locked up in a vault and sort of issue a statement of which would say, uh, my apologies to those expecting this to come out. It will never be seen because it was just, no disrespect to another film that came out this summer, A Trainwreck which is what this should have been called. It was a disaster. It was um, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. People go on and on about these Ed Wood movies and um, other sort of classic bad movies. This kind of falls into that category for me. And uh, I shame the studios and everybody involved for allowing real trash to come out and deceive the wonderful film-going audience that expects more quality than that. Shame on you, and shame on every person involved with the film, including the actors, even the small parts, I thought were terrible. Terribly directed, terribly acted. Every member of the cast was horrible. And um, I give it unprecedented one bag of popcorn. Way more than it even deserves. But as you know, there is no such thing as zero bags of popcorn. There has to be a bag of popcorn. This is, these are movies, so uh, laws of physics demand at least one bag of popcorn, but it is a sad, lonely bag with no salt, no butter, many unpopped corn at the bottom of the bag, a bag of popcorn that is stale, hardly able to eat. It is a horrible, horrible movie, Ant-Man, directed by Peyton Reed. So that gets one bag of popcorn. Okay. The, uh, the other movie we want to talk about is The Fantastic Four, directed by Josh Trank. Josh, one of the greats, uh, my captain, Josh Trank. This one's for you. Uh, Fantastic Four, starring Tim Heidecker, Miles Teller, Kate Mara, Michael B. Jordan, not the basketball player, uh, 
And uh, four young outsiders teleport to an alternate universe, which alters their physical form in shocking ways. The four must learn to harness their new abilities and work together to save Earth from a powerful enemy. I give this one six bags of popcorn. It is a home run. It, this movie was sort of the quintessential popcorn movie. That's why I give it so many bags. Perfectly handled by the master himself, Josh Trank. Thank you for your direction and gave me such great guidance and made, uh, made it such a fun, easy film for me to work on. Greg, what did you think of this one? Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I mm -hmm. thought, um, you know, the beginning's a little bit slow, but overall I think it was one of the best superhero movies that has been made. It has big scenes and it has small scenes. I thought that uh, I completely understand why you would want to be involved with it, why you would pay the $15,000 to get that cameo right, in the movie. We're not, so, no. You know, that's what they do nowadays, is it, can it I, it's called a, very a much? vanity no, role. It's and not you, what you happened. pay $15,000 was... and you get a couple of lines in the movie. It's a good investment on your part uh, because it helps promote uh, it's Decker, to you know. Me that you think that that's what happened. Well, I don't think that's, not... that's what happened. I heard you talking on the phone and making the deal. The opposite happens to be true. I was paid that much and some for the work I did on that for movie. For your fantastic four lines in the movie no, I, that you paid $15,000 to. I didn't uh, pay. It was a great you, movie you believe, anyway, regardless of that. Believe what you movies believe. have to get the money. They, have, believe, to, they have to get the up. budget I'm, somehow. I'll, I'll block like you out. I'll have everybody, all of them, walk you this out. This is you one of the things they do with movies is now is that you can pay to be in a movie in a cameo role. That's enough of the show. Thank you very much. In a cameo role, you can pay to be part of a movie. You have to understand, I did not pay a dime for this. You got on the phone with Josh Trang and offered him $15,000. Thousand dollars. I offered for him the role idea that the I did not offer him four. any money. If I offered him money, it was to get the conversation started, and that's where it ended. And he was, gave you a vanity role and then I was in paid, the movie. I know it was not a vanity role. I auditioned like everybody else, so I was paid thirty-five thousand dollars. It's a formality. $1. That's just a formality. You paid thirty-five thousand hey, dollars. Drop this now, or you don't come back next week. All right.